Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another plan with me video, but this time we are going to be focusing specifically on how I use the weekly spread pages in my planner. Last week on my Instagram, I had asked if anyone would be interested in a video like this and a bunch of you said yes, so we're going to try it out. This is my first time doing a video showing how I use the weekly spreads because I find it a really unique process to a person's life and style. But because so many of you wanted to see it, I thought I would try and show you how I personally use the spreads. So I thought while I showed you how I used the spreads, I could also point out a couple of things I like to do to personalize or spruce up the spread. Obviously, these pages are just how I use them and not how you have to use them because it's going to be very different for everyone, but I hope you still enjoy watching my process and maybe you can get a few ideas for your own planner. So first we're going to start by going through how I've used the weekly spread so far um, since it's been a few weeks already and over those weeks I've tried to find my rhythm and style and what works for me. So this is the first week in the planner and I have it set up with the first section is being used for my daily to-do list and then the second week is kind of just random, just could be uh, TV shows, could be little reminders, could be fitness, It kind of a just random little section. And then the bottom section is always for my reading. So in this week, I was trying to just figure out what my style was and how I wanted to use it because this is my first time using a vertical spread. And I like how it turned out. Uh, there are some things that I've changed moving into the second week, but for the most part, it's pretty similar. So again, the top row, I have my daily to-do list. The second week, again, really random. There's quotes, there's things that I've purchased. And then at the bottom, I keep trying track of what I'm reading. This week I tried to simplify it because I was reading the same book through the whole week and I didn't want to keep writing on the same day. So I just have used these arrows, which I kind of really liked how that worked out. And then on the side here, I have a this week section where I am tracking the pages that I read, my weekly steps, my weekly highlight, my weekly low light, and then a weekly to-do list where I can add and check off things throughout the week that don't necessarily happen in my to-do list. And then in this middle section here on the little title bar, I've been writing how far I've been walking every day and at the top, just if there's any milestones I want to remember. So that is my second week. I actually really like how that one turned out. Um, and then we move in to the third week, which again is very similar. It has the same kind of setup, to-do list. The weekend, I tried to get kind of fun with it. The middle row, again, pretty random. There's some fitness. There's uh, what I'm watching on TV and then just some like doodles and random stickers and stuff. And then on the bottom, again, is what I'm reading. This week I read a bit more, so it was a little bit more chaotic, but overall I'm really happy with the system I have laid out. And again, I did the same thing on the side. I haven't come up with anything to do on the bottom here yet, but I'm still working on it. I'm not even sure if I'm going to do anything there or if I'm just going to leave it. That is a look at how I've been using the weekly spreads so far, but we are going to move on to a brand new week and I'm going to show you how I set up the entire week, certain things that I like to do, some quick little doodles that you could add or incorporate into your own planners. Um, and I also just thought it might be fun for you to see how I use the planner in the entire week to fill this out. So every day I'm going to be showing how I update it and the things that I'm adding and how I'm keeping track of things. So hopefully you enjoy seeing that process. Okay, to start off, we are going to go over a couple of my favorite supplies that I've been using lately. So this is a new pen that I've been trying out and I've really liked it. It is the Uniball 1 set. I got it in a set of 10. I got them off jet pens. It's a 0.38 tip. I've been using this as my primary black pen for about two weeks now and I really like it. Next I just have this small little ruler. It's clear so I can kind of see where I am lining things up. And then my favorite gray highlighter which I have mentioned in my favorite pens video. Uh, and then finally just my collection of washi tape. I also like to have some stickers on hand. These are ones I just sell in my shop but you could use whatever stickers you like. So those are just a couple of things I like to have nearby when I'm getting ready to start planning. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to set up my week is the side panel here where I take one of these blank banners that I sell in my shop. You could just draw your own or you don't even have to use a sticker here, but I use it as the title. And then I just take a small 
brush pen and write this week in the top of it and then i'm just going to use a random pen this time i'm using a pentel energel pen for the titles i'm trying this blue ink this is my first time trying the pen so i just wanted to test it out and see how it looked on the spread and i'm just going to write all of the headings that i want to keep track of so that's my weekly pages read and my weekly steps and my highlight and low light of the week and then again a weekly to-do list i like to keep two spaces two lines in between the highlight and low light in case i want to write more than one thing or in case it's a longer thing that happened so i like to leave some room there um, but I just write those titles in and then I'm going to take a blue highlighter. This is the Zebra Mild Liner in blue. These are my favorite types of highlighters because they're really mild like the title says. Um, and I'm just going to highlight those titles. Uh, I used blue this time. Last time I used gray, but I wanted to try the blue because I thought it would match really well with the color scheme of the week. So that's just all I do to set that up. I fill in that section at the very end of the week. So it kind of just stays like that, except for the to-do list, which I fill in whenever I have something I want to add to it. Then I'm just going to take this gray highlighter and highlight the days of the week. This is just something random I like to do. I'm not even sure why I do it, but I just like to have them highlighted. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up the little to-do list banners that I put at the top of every day for my daily to-do list. As you can see on last week, I do the same thing across the whole week. This is a really simple thing that you could do. You don't even have to do them for to-do lists. You could use them as any kind of title. I use them over and over again. Sometimes I get more elaborate, but the ones I do for my to-do list are really simple. It's literally four lines and two dashed lines. And I find adding banners are a really easy way to emphasize a title or make something like pop a little bit more. I just really like adding banners. So I started with these really simple ones. Like I said, they're just a couple of lines and I use a ruler to make sure they're straight. So for these banners, all you do is draw two parallel lines and then connect them with two small lines to make the end of it to kind of make a V shape. And then I like to add a dashed line on the two longest edges because I think it makes it kind of look like a ribbon and it's a really simple detail to add. I think dashed lines are really nice. You'll see that I use them quite a bit throughout my planner, but I think it really adds to the element of it and then you can just write the title in. So like I said, these little banners are really easy to do. And then just to finish it up, I'm going to take this gray highlighter and I'm going to do a very small line on one of the edges of the V and then along the bottom of the ribbon. This just adds a nice little shadow. It kind of makes it pop on your planner a little bit more. It's just optional, but I think it looks better like that. And then I'm just going to write in to do on the ribbon part. So obviously I'm using the vertical spread, but I also wanted to show last year in my planner, I had a horizontal spread because that's all I offered, but I used a horizontal spread and I did something very similar in that one with the ribbon. So I wanted to just quickly show you that you can do it in a horizontal spread. So again, it's just four lines. I did the dash lines and added in the to-do list, but it was just a different orientation. So you can still do it in the horizontal spread. You could do the ribbon that I do as well, but I just wanted to show you the other option too. But back to this week, I am going to just jot in a couple of things that are on today's to-do list. It's not that exciting. I just draw little check boxes and write in what's on that daily to-do list. This is something that I do every single morning. Usually I grab a cup of coffee, jot down my to-do list, and then get right into work. Usually it takes me less than five minutes. Um, and then at the end of the day or even every couple of days, I fill in the other sections depending on how much time I have in a given day. So another way that I like to personalize my planner is by using and incorporating washi tape into my weekly spreads. This is a pretty new thing for me. I didn't really use a lot of washi tape last year, but this year I've been trying to incorporate it a lot more into my weekly spreads. And I've been really enjoying it so far. I love that it can add pops of color. I love that you can use it to emphasize certain moments um, or to break up certain sections when I need to figure out spacing of things. So I've been really enjoying that aspect this year and I think it's a really fun way that you can add 
to your planner and personalize it. But moving back to today, I'm going to be using some washi tape to split up this section based on my reading for today. So I finished one book and started another and I don't want that section to get too jumbled. So I'm going to use a piece of washi tape and split up the section into two sections. So I'm going to take a piece of washi tape, I'm going to measure how long I need it and mark it just using my finger and then I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to cut it again in half so that the strips aren't as wide. So I have two thinner strips and I'm going to use those two thin strips to mark off each section of that particular box. Then I'm just going to use some stickers. I'm going to write in the book titles and fill in that section based on the books that I finished and the books that I started. Because I'm only using one section for my reading, sometimes on particular days where I do start and finish more than one book on a day, it can be tricky to keep them all in one section. So I find using washi tape, it kind of helps break up those sections and keep it a little bit more organized and not so cluttered. Uh, it's still something I am working on, but so far I really like having the ability to create smaller sections within bigger sections so things don't get as cluttered. Another element I like to add to my weekly spreads are boxes. You can do a lot with a box and you can make it look really cute. Whether it's just a regular solid line or a dash line box, I find they really spice up whatever you are using th them for, whether it's a quote, a sticker, a reminder, your fitness, what you're watching, or even what you're reading. It's a really simple way to emphasize something, like really simple. You can do really quick things to take it one step further, like adding a drop shadow or drawing a little piece of tape on the top to make it look like a note or adding some polka dots to the background or adding a little banner to make a title. On the day to day, I don't usually have a ton of time, so I like taking these really simple and easy elements and sprucing them up just a little bit. And it really doesn't take that much extra time. I just take a ruler and draw a box, like literally just draw a box and uh, use that box to add whatever I want to that particular section. So I use these boxes primarily in the middle row of my vertical spread. Although if you have a horizontal spread, you could easily just add these anywhere on your day to day. But like I said, I just draw a box using a ruler. That way it's nice and straight and then add whatever I want on the inside, and then I take a few extra seconds just to add a couple of extra elements to make it look a little bit nicer and a little bit more intentional. So for example, on this particular one, I drew a box using a solid line, using a ruler, and then again, using that same ruler, I drew two horizontal lines that were not the same length as the box, and then I just joined them using a jagged line to make it look like there's a piece of tape holding this little note in place. And then I just colored it in so it was a solid color. In the past, I've added little white polka dots to it or little white lines to kind of add some style to the tape, but this time I just left it blank. Next, I'm going to take my favorite gray highlighter and I'm gonna add a quick drop shadow going along the right side of the box and along the bottom. And then the last thing I like to do is add some kind of background behind the little note. You could just leave it blank like this, but I like adding just a little bit of extra in the background. I think it really ties together that section and brings it all together. So I've added polka dots, I've done diagonal lines, I've done little stars. Really, there are so many different possibilities, different color schemes you could do. Lots of different possibilities on how to add a background behind the box. And again, you don't even have to do a solid line. You could do a dashed line box and get same kind of element. There's so many varieties of what you can do. So here I'm just going to grab a pen and add some polka dots to the background just to kind of tie it all together. Okay, so it is a new day and I did not realize my camera stopped recording yesterday, so I'm going to fill you in on what I've done. I've added my to-do list for today and yesterday I finished off my little note with some of the purchases and then earlier today I wrote in a book that I finished. This is actually an interesting one because I ended up making a mistake and so this is what I did to cover it up. So when I was writing in what book I finished, the pen was way too light to read so I used some whiteout to cover it up and then I used a piece of washi tape over that 
because I didn't want the white out to be super visible and then I just put a sticker over top with the name of the book and added a little background so uh, it's okay to make mistakes in your planner I in fact I do it all the time like probably every day I make a mistake um, you can do things to cover it up or you can uh, just leave it it's your planner it doesn't really matter mistakes are a part of life but I just wanted to show a quick way of how I covered mine up but moving on I am going to add in uh, that I finished the book that I was reading so I'm going to add in here the page numbers that I read yesterday and then the page numbers I read today uh, I just do a simple calculation. I mostly use Goodreads to track my progress and then I record it in my planner. That's the method that works the easiest for me. So I do a quick subtraction uh, based on my progress that I've done on Goodreads, but I'm you can come up with your own system on what works for you. This is just what works for me. So another element I like to add to my planners is arrows. I recently started using arrows on the vertical spread because I didn't want to keep writing the name of the book that I was reading if I read it over multiple days. So I found it easier to incorporate an arrow. So I just add a little loop in it to give it some personality. And I also liked to add these little dots throughout the body of the arrow. I saw this idea in my Facebook group. Someone had shared their spread and they had used arrows and done something like this. And I thought it was a, such a great idea to kind of add an extra little element and the dots kind of make the arrow a little bit more exciting than just a regular arrow. It fills uh, some empty space sometimes when I'm not sure what to do with it. Anyway, so I'm going to keep finishing up this part. I like to write in the name of the book and I'm also going to use my little star writing stickers, which is something new that I added this year to the weekly spreads. I really like having them on the weekly spread so that I can look back and have a really quick glance at what I thought about a book. So now I have a section in my planner which I don't know what to do with. And sometimes this happens to me on a weekly spread where I'm not watching anything. I don't really have anything important to add to that day. So what I've been doing is either adding stickers or adding doodles or one of the weeks I even wrote in a quote and made it this like two section little spread, which I really liked. So I'm gonna do something like that again. This year I've been using the mild liners to do the little doodles. And then I just wrote in a little quote that surrounded it. It was something just really fun to do when I have a little bit of extra time. So I'm gonna do something like that again today. I'm going to take a quote from the poet Amanda Gorman from her poem on inauguration day that I really liked. Before we get to that, I wanted to quickly show you in last year's planner how I incorporated some doodles. That way you can see, you can do it in the horizontal spread as well. You just have to have a different layouts, different styles, but I doodled a lot. Last year's planner is when I really discovered my love of adding doodles to the weekly spread. So that's where it all started. And as the year progressed, I kind of developed my own little style and things that I liked adding. So here's just a couple of instances where I did that. It was really random. It kind of just depended on the day, but uh, just wanted to show you, you can do it in either spread. It doesn't have to be just the vertical one. But for this one, I'm going to take you step by step through my process. So first I'm going to take this white out and I'm going to cover the line that's dividing. The white out isn't exactly the same color as the paper, but it's the best option I have right now and then I'm going to take a pencil and rough in where I want the quote to be so that I can kind of get a general sense of the layout. Then I'm going to take this gray brush pen which I really like using the gray one for quotes like this and I'm just going to go over the pencil marks and hand letter the quote Then I'm going to take an eraser once the pen is dry erase all of the pencil marks and then I'm going to get started on the surrounding elements. So to add those extra elements, I'm going to take this dark gray pen and I'm just going to start by drawing a single line and adding a couple of extra little branches off of it. And I'm gonna do this a couple of different times, repeating those lines in each corner of the section. Then I'm gonna grab one of the highlighters and I'm gonna use the brush pen tip of it and I'm gonna add a teardrop shape to the end of all of the little branches that we drew. I'm gonna go around and do that on all the little lines that we did. So I'm gonna do one color at a time. 
Then I'm going to go back to the dark gray pen I was using earlier. I'm going to draw one line on the bottom and one line on the top going in the same direction as the other ones. And when I do this one, I'm gonna draw them a little bit different than the first section that we did. And then I'm gonna do a slightly curved line and then add these little V shapes intermittently throughout that line. Then I'm gonna grab a different color highlighter and again, I'm going to use the brush tip end. This time I'm going to do a different shape on the end. I'm going to do kind of a little oval shape on the end. You can experiment with whatever shapes you want, but it doesn't have to be fancy at all. It can just be like a circle, it could be an oval. You could do another teardrop shape, uh, whatever you want. But the different branches is going to make it look different anyways, because we have more elements there. And I'm kind of going to examine it and see what I need to add. So I can already see that I want to add a couple of extra branches to the ones with the mint colored leaves. I think it needs a couple of additional leaves. So I'm going to add one more branch on each one and again add the same teardrop shape to that one just to make it a little bit fuller. Then I can see there's a little bit of white space here, so I'm just going to add this little V shape and add two more of the pink ones just to make it a little bit more even in terms of the different colored elements. And finally, the last step is to add some little berries. So I'm going to do yellow ones. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to take the other end, which is the nib portion, and I'm just going to draw little circles in all of the little white spaces in varying sizes. And then I'm going to take that same dark gray pen. I'm going to add really tiny little X's just off center on all of them to make them look like little berries throughout it. This is one of my favorite elements to add. I think it really ties everything together. And then finally, at the very end, I'm going to take this blue highlighter. And again, I'm going to take the nib portion and just fill in some extra little polka dots to tie it all together and make it look a little bit more cohesive. So that's it, that's what it looked like. You can always change what type of quote you're doing. You could not do a quote at all and only do elements. You could just do a quote, you could change the colors, you could change what the different elements look like in terms of their shape or color or style. It can be really adaptable and changing, but I think it adds just a nice little artistic element to the weekly spread and it gives me a minute to be a bit more creative. So that is the basics of how I use my planner. Obviously, when I add new information, whether it's fitness or TV or what I'm reading, those types of things are always going to be a little bit different, but I've gone over the basics of what I do. It's just the information that changes. So I'm going to speed through a couple of things and I'll pop back in anytime there's something particular that I want to point out or mention. But uh, moving forward, this is kind of a time lapse on how I use my planner throughout the week.
So I'm going to jump back in here to show you how I do another element in my planner. This one is how I draw a little TV on here just to incorporate what I'm currently watching. So I draw a little TV. You start with a rectangle or square. It doesn't have to be perfect. I start with pencil on this one just to get the shape right. So you're going to draw a square or rectangle TV shaped however, and then you're going to draw a smaller one on the inside. So it doesn't matter how much space you leave. I just leave a little bit of space just to draw the screen in. And then you're going to draw a half circle or like just the top of a circle, a little dome at the top. And then I do two little antenna. I think it just makes it look a little bit more like TV, <laughs> a little bit more obvious. Uh, and then you can fill it in however you want. I usually outline mine in black and i usually leave the screen part white and just write the title in but this one i decided to get a little bit more fun and colorful with one advice i would have is if you're trying to incorporate a little bit more doodles or drawings into your planner is to try and break it down into simple shapes so for this one it was just two rectangles and a little half circle and a line and two circles just to make the TV. And when you break it down like that, it makes it a little bit less intimidating and just a little bit easier to do. And it's a really simple drawing, but I think when you add some color and add the title, it kind of all comes together in the end. Another element I decided to add to this weekly spread was doing a doodle on a scrap piece of paper. In this instance, I used craft paper. I just ripped it up and did a cute little doodle on it uh, in black and white and just incorporated that in. And I actually used it to cover up a mistake I made on the box that I drew. So it ended up working out really well. This is just another example of how you can cover up mistakes in your planner. But that also brings us to the very end of the week and how I wrapped up the last little section of the planner here. So the very last thing I like to do at the end of the week is fill in this panel on the side here with all my like weekly stats, highlight, low light, my steps in pages read. So I'm going to quickly tally those up and fill it in and then I will come back for us to take a look at how the weekly spread turned out and some final thoughts. Okay, so that is a wrap on another week complete in my planner and it brings us to the end of this plan with me video. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I use the weekly spread section of the planner and I hope that maybe it gave you a few ideas on how you can incorporate these simple elements into your weekly spread, even if you're tracking or planning different things than I am. But even if we have completely different styles or methods of planning, that's okay because this planner is all about getting creative and making it work for your life. So it's always going to be different for each person. Next up in the plan with me series will be the monthly wrap up where I show how I use the end pages of each month. So be on the lookout for that. It will be coming near the end of January. And if you're not already, you can subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever there's a new video. And you can also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.